Let's try out this question from 2014. Amy 2, problem 7. Let f of x be x squared plus 3x plus 2 raised to cosine of pi x. Well, the first thing you may see is that we can factor x cubed plus 3x plus 2. It's x plus 1 times x plus 2. So maybe we're going to have to utilize that fact. Anyway, let's read on. Find the sum of all positive integers n for which this crazy expression, absolute value of the summation from k equals to 1 to n of log base 10 of f of k is equal to 1. This is a crazy expression, so let's try to break it down. So we know absolute value of this quantity, the summation, has to be 1. That's telling you the summation has to be 1 or negative 1, because when you take absolute value of the summation, we have to get 1. Okay, what else do we know? Well, let's try to, let's try to write this down. So what's summation? from k equals to 1 to n of log base 10 of f of k. Well, that's going to be log base 10 of f of 1. You're plugging 1. You're plugging 1 into k. Then it's going to be k of 2. So you're going to get plus log base 10 of f of 2 plus log base 10 of f of 3 all the way to plus log base 10 of f of n. So you are adding all of these logarithms, and you may remember an important property of logarithms is that when you're adding a bunch of logarithms with the same base together, you can just multiply the elements together inside. So this thing is the same thing as log base 10 of f of 1 times f of 2 times f of 3 all the way to times f of n. Okay? So we know. So we know this expression is equal to the summation. So you know this thing has to be 1 or negative 1. So what's that telling you about the product inside? So you know log base 10 of this product has to be 1 or negative 1. So that's telling you this f of 1 times f of 2 times f of 3 all the way to f of n has to be either 10 or 1 tenth because when the when this inside when the when everything becomes 10 inside log base 10 of 10 is going to be 1 which is good or if everything inside is 1 tenth or 10 to the negative first power then log base 10 of 1 tenth is going to get us negative 1 so you know from all of this crazy expression from this crazy crazy constraint that they gave us we know f of 1 times f of 2 all the way to f of n has to be 10 or negative 10 so let's try to work with this expression now another information they gave us was how to find f of x f of x was x squared plus 3x plus 2 times cosine of pi x power but realize that x is going to be our x is going to be 1, 2, and all the way to n. It's going to be integer. So cosine of pi x is going to be very easy to evaluate. Cosine of pi, when x is 1. Cosine of pi, so that's when x is 1. Cosine of pi is going to be negative 1. When x is 2, cosine of 2 pi is 1. When x is 3, cosine of 3 pi goes back to negative 1. And when x is 4, Cosine of 4 pi is 1, and this pattern is going to continue just from the unit circle. So we know if x is equal to odd, we know x is going to be integer. So if x is odd, we know this cosine of pi x, this cosine of pi x is going to be negative 1. And when x is even, cosine of pi x is going to be positive 1. Okay? So that's good to know. What do we do now? So now let's actually try to evaluate this f of 1 times f of 2 all the way to f of n. So to begin with, let's start by factoring f what the quantity inside f of x, this expression x squared plus 3x plus 2 becomes x plus 2 times x plus 1 when you factor it and you're raising it to cosine of pi x power. Okay? So when, let's try to evaluate our f depending on our value of x. So that's, our, that's going to be our x. This is going to be f of x. When x is 1, you're going to get 3 times 2, 
raise to cosine of pi x, and when x is odd, when x is odd, cosine of pi x is going to be negative 1, so you're going to raise to negative first power. So another way of writing it is 1 over 3 times 2, because you're raising it to negative 1. When x is 2, cosine of pi x is going to be 1, so it's going to be just 4 times 3, no dividing by, no raising it to negative first power in this case. x is 3, that's going to get us 1 over 5 times 4, 5 times 4, and you can continue this process. When x is 4, it's going to be, it's going to be 6 times 5, when x is 5, it's going to be 1 over 7 times 6, and so on. And we know, we want f of 1 times f of 2, so let me write this down, f of 1 times f of 2, all the way to f of n, to be either 10 or 1 tenth. So let's think about this. So just f of 1, just f of 1 is getting you 1 over 3 times 2, f of 1, so that's f of 1, f of 1 times f of 2 is going to get us 1 over 3, 1 over 3 times 2, times 4 times 3, and 3's are going to cancel out, so that's getting us 4 divided by 2. How about f of 1 times f of 2 times f of 3? Well, you're going to have 1 over 3 times 2, 4 times 3, and 1 over 5 times 4, and a lot of things are canceling out as you can see. So in the end, you're going to be left with 1 over 2 times 5. So f of 1 is 1 over 2 times 3, f of 1 times f of 2 is 4 over 2, that's f of 3. f of 4 is when you're multiplying, when you multiply another f of 4 to this, then 5's are gonna cancel out, so you're going to have 6 over 2. And when you, when you multiply, when you divide by 7 times 6, so multiply by another f of 5, you're going to get 1 over 7 times 6, 6 are going to cancel out, and you're going to get 1 over 2 times 7. And maybe you're seeing a pattern for this one. For when f, when the last f value you're multiplying is odd, you're going to get 1 over 2 times something, 1 over 2 times something, 1 over 2 times something, where this value is keep on increasing by 2, and when the last f value you're multiplying by is even, it's increasing by 2, you're getting 4, you're getting 6, then you're going to get 8 over 2, and so on. And we wish to get either 10 or 1 tenth, and obviously you're getting 1 tenth right here, so that's 1 tenth. So our n value of 3 is going to get us 1 tenth, so that's one value we found. How about getting 10? Well, you're going to get 10 by uh, doing 4 divided by 2, 6 divided by 2, 8 divided by 2, all the way to 20 divided by 2. So when is 20 divided by 2 going to occur? Well, when you're ending with n equals to 2, when n is equal to 2, you're getting 4 over 2. When you're ending with n equals to 4, you're getting 6 over 2. And n equals to 6 is getting us 8 over 2, and so on. So you, when are you going to get 20 over 2? Well, realize that this 4 is going 2 times 2, this 6 is 2 times 3, this 8 is 2 times 4, and this 20 is 2 times 10. And realize that this 2, this n equals to 2, is 2 times 1. So I'm just showing you a fast way to up counting it if you want to. 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and so on. Realize that you're adding 1 each time to this fraction. 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and so on. So our value of n that corresponds with 20 over 2 is going to be 2 times 9. You want this 9 to be 1 less than 10. So that's getting us n equals to 18. So when n is equal to 3, you're going to get 1 tenth. When n is equal to 18, you're going to get 10. And those are the only values you're going to get 10 or 1 tenth. Because for odd values of n, you're going to get 1 over 2 times some, some odd number. And obviously, once this odd number is increasing, after you hit 1 tenth, it's going to be way too small. You're never going to get to 1 tenth again. And same, and same reasoning, likewise, for even values of n, you're going to get two, some even number divided by 2, and once you hit tw once you hit 20 over 2, then it's going to keep on increasing, 22 over 2, 24 over 2, and you're not going to get down to 10 again. So these are the only two values for which for which we have what our expression becomes true, so n equals to 3 and n equals to 18. 
So we wish to find the sum of n equals to 3 and n equals to 18. So our answer to this question is 21.